What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So this is video three of my how to start a business with a $500 budget. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you basically how to insert products on your website, how to put your Facebook pixel in your website, um, just the shipping stuff, the legal stuff, and things like that. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so starting off with the Facebook pixel. Facebook pixel is the most important thing for my Shopify website aside from the marketing aspect. The Facebook pixel in Shopify basically allows me to get the backend analytics on my website. On video one, I went more in depth on the Facebook pixel, but basically a Facebook pixel tracks every single thing on your website from people who visited your website, which pages they were on the longest, which items were clicked the most, which carts got abandoned, email capture and all of those things. To actually plug your Facebook pixel into your website, you're gonna go to preferences and then you're gonna scroll down and it's gonna say Facebook pixel and then you're gonna take the Facebook pixel ID that you got directly from Facebook and put it right into your website. So. Once again, if you guys didn't watch video one, super quick, super easy to get a Facebook pixel. You go to Facebook, go to your business manager, to click the three little lines, then go to Facebook pixel. It's gonna give you the steps on how to get one and then you're gonna just plug that right into what I just showed you. So the next thing is to add the products that I got on Shopify. So I already went into the store, I got my products, I got permission that I was able to use the photos from the manufacturer, now it's time to put them on Shopify. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually click on products and add a product to the page. The first item that I'm gonna put on my website is this purple set and I'm gonna just call it, let's say we call it the lady set. And then from there, I'm gonna go to my email because he sent me all of the pictures of um, all of the products and all of the specs of the products. So I'm gonna save and download each and every picture that I like so I can put it onto my website. And then from there, I'm gonna copy and paste all the specs into the description box because these things are important. Certain people are allergic to certain fabrics or don't like the way certain fabrics feel on their skin. So the way I see it as a consumer, the more information on a website, the more that I trust it, the more integrity that it has, and the more that I think that the product and the quality of the products are gonna be good. My personal opinion, that's just the way I shop. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the price. This obviously just depends on what you wanna price your items at. Whenever I price my items, I always like to consider overhead costs, which is basically the subscription for the website, um, what I ship the items in. So if you're getting tissue paper, or you're getting cute bags, or you have any branding, marketing, any labels, or anything like that, you wanna go ahead and divvy up those up, and then basically put that into the price of your product. I will go ahead and in video four or five, I basically go through all of the branding and marketing things that I like to put into my products. Um, general rule of thumb for me is I like to add anywhere from like two to four dollars worth of marketing costs for each product. So one thing that is important to me, even when you're starting up a small business, is always adding a unique SKU. A SKU is a stock keeping unit, which is basically the way a lot of big brands or employees like to communicate. I always make it super, super, super easy to follow. So PP, Puse Power, and then I actually just put the name of the actual product. So I'm gonna put Lady Set, and then I put an initial for the color. So P is purple. A stock keeping unit may seem super small to you guys, but stay in the mindset that one day you're gonna be a bigger business and you need to be organized. The better you're organized, the better it's gonna be in the future, so just start now. That's a little motivation for y'all and I'm just manifesting bigger business for all of y'all watching. The next thing, obviously, you're gonna wanna put in the quantities. I bought minimal quantities on each item, so I only bought six, so I'm gonna put the quantity at six. And then you also wanna put in the weight. Um, when I started my business, I actually got a scale for free from USPS because they know I'm gonna be shipping products. It makes their job easier if I pre-weigh the objects. Or you can also get a scale on Amazon for super cheap. Then you have the important part, which is basically the variants. So variants are small, medium, large, purple, pink, blue, orange, black, white. So after I select that there are multiple variants in this item, I'm gonna have to fix the quantities and put two, 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 because when I bought this wholesale, the pack came in too small, too medium, too large. If you guys want more information on the sizing, I did not pick the sizing, you guys can reference to video two. Most wholesalers have a certain way that they sell things. Oh, yeah. Now, your items, do they come in two, 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 or no, three, two, one? Three, two, one. Yeah, three small, two more one. Okay. That's cool. Your sizes, once again, they come in... Uh, two smalls, two mediums, and two larges. Okay. And, 
and I basically went down through the whole breakdown on um, shopping in wholesale stores in two videos that I will link down below and put in this video somewhere. So after I adjust the quantities, I personally always like to adjust my SKUs. Instead of putting one, two, three, or ABC, which is what Shopify usually does, I like to put S for small, M for medium, and L for large. That's just something that I like to do, but to each its own. Another thing that's gonna help you in the long run with the objective that this business is gonna go from just having five products to 200 products to 20 products, whatever you see fit. So for me, always putting more information as I can is always best in my book. So say for example, somebody comes and they search on your site that they want a purple pearl set. They don't know the name of the set. Say you have 200 products, they're not gonna scroll through. They might put in the search bar, purple pearl. So basically everything on the side here breaks it down to, I'm gonna put this as a set. I'm gonna go ahead and then tag just different things that I think people might search for. Once again, as a small business, you might not need it, but for seeing the future, you just wanna get in the habit of thinking big and thinking more products and, and more organization and a bigger team and easy way to communicate. So I always like to add as many tags as I see fit for each individual item. This is really beneficial because say you get a random person that sees your outfit tagged from Instagram from like two months ago and your website now has 200 items and they don't know the name of the item, they can literally put purple pearl and this product would probably come up. So this is a little tip for people who don't got that coin to buy a whole bunch of inventory and you're also testing out your audience and seeing what they like. So two tips in one is buy one product that you actually like for yourself or that you like for your audience and then don't buy the second item but you can still put it on your website and you could put it as a pre-order. And another tip is separating the two so you have two separate products so your product page fills out and you have more products to choose from rather than one product in three different variants. So reason number one why I like to do this is one, I don't know what colors you guys like. I don't have the budget to just buy whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and test out the product first. Go ahead in the description box and put, this is a pre-order and then make sure the pre-order is like a week and a half to two weeks out. Always stay in contact with the vendor to make sure that they have this item in stock. And you also want to make sure that it's able to ship quickly so that when you see that a few people are ordering the item and then get it shipped away to your customers ASAP. Another reason why I don't want to put one product under multiple variants is because I don't have that many products on my page. So if I want to fill my page out, instead of putting everything in one product, I'm going to go ahead and separate the two so it just looks like I have a little bit more going on. And this is a little tip that I had for myself when I first started out. And on the bright side, if nobody really even likes that product, then you have nothing to lose. You don't, you're not stuck with the inventory and you can just simply take it off of your page. This is also really good in the testing period so that you can kind of see which items your demographic gravitates to, to and just get a better feel of your audience. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys another example of one item in one product so that you guys can see what I'm talking about and if you wanna go that route, you know exactly how to do it. So this sweater I purchased in the color purple, but it also comes in the color orange and it's in stock, um, it's in LA, I can drive to pick it up if people are ordering it and I'm gonna also put this as a pre-order. But instead of putting it in two separate products, I'm gonna put it all in one. So in the description box, I'm gonna put that the orange color is on pre-order and it'll ship in about two weeks. And I'm also gonna provide additional information to my customers that if they do purchase multiple items on the website there and one of them is pre-order, there is a chance that they might get multiple packages. You just wanna be proactive so that you're not getting a whole bunch of emails talking about, I only got the one item, I didn't get the two. So after you go ahead and add the pictures, add the description and put all of the information in, now it's time to adjust the variant. So after I fix all of the SKUs and fix all the variants to the right numbers and sizes, then I'm gonna go ahead and click the picture box and I'm gonna put the corresponding picture with the corresponding color in the back end. This basically helps so when people are on your website and they're clicking orange or purple, they can actually see exactly what color and what it looks like on the model. This becomes super helpful when you start getting into products that say like beige and ivory 
when beige and ivory to a lot of people can mean the same color but when you click it and you see that the beige is a little bit different than the ivory on your customer or on the model so it's just a better way to communicate and be straightforward with your customer so the next thing that we want to set up is setting up payment which is the way that we're going to get our coin so you're gonna go into settings and then from settings, you're gonna hit payment providers. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and click to add your information. So you're gonna add all of your information here. It's gonna ask for your EIN number, which is your employer identification number. I like to think of this as a social security number for your business and basically separates you from your actual entity. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's just what I like to think, okay? Don't take my logic as legal advice. Consult a lawyer, please. Then after you put all of your address and information in, it's gonna ask you for a brief description of what you're selling. And then from there, it's gonna provide a, a big statement descriptor for you, which you can also change. This is basically what pops up of, say your customer buys something and they're like, what is this $70 cost from? And then they can just look at the description and it's gonna say Puse Power, which is like, oh yeah, I remember I bought from da 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 da, -da and whoop de whoop. And then after that, everything is set up. You can also set up your PayPal, but you're not gonna get a notification to set up the whole entire process of PayPal until you get your first order. So following up with payment, I am then going to go into shipping. Shipping is probably my personal biggest headache of e -com just because it's a lot. But to set up the shipping, you're gonna go to settings and then from there you're gonna click shipping. And then under there, they already have um, presets under domestic as far as free and they do based off of weight. Um, unfortunately for me, I haven't found the sweet spot with shipping. If y'all know anything about shipping for a cheaper price or shipping tips, please let your girl know because I feel like that area is very gray for me. I personally am gonna just set my shipping at $7 because the smallest priority package to ship is a $7 envelope. And if your customers get more than just one item and they get like a jacket or something, you're gonna have to spend like $20 on shipping. That's not fair to charge everybody else $20 for shipping, so I just do the minimum, the sweet spot of $7. And for those bulkier items, what I like to do personally is just add the shipping cost to the overall product um, so that you're not adjusting the shipping for everyone, you're just adjusting that shipping for that product for the people who are buying that specific product. That was a lot of words, I hope it made sense, and I hope y'all understood me. And then if you are wanting to open up your site to international shipping, you're gonna wanna choose the countries. I only choose specific countries because in my experience, unfortunately, I've had to ship to random countries that I don't really get that much traffic from, and then I realized that there's a certain law and certain way to ship to certain countries. And then that person ends up getting their item like 40 days later, which is never a good thing to communicate via email. It's just a hot mess. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your research on countries to ship from um, for yourself and depending on where you are in the world. The smallest trackable package for international shipping is $26.50. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my price at $26.50. The next thing is the legal page and the shipping and the private policy and things like that. So in order to set all of these pages up, you're gonna go to settings and then you're gonna go to legal. Um, Shopify provides templates for all of these different um, legal things that you need on your website. I like to use the template, but I like to customize it to my own because they basically make a general template so that pretty much anybody can fall under that category. But for example, I'm not selling any gas or liquid, so I can go ahead and just delete that. I'm not selling any gift cards or any software, so I can go ahead and delete that. And I can also adjust the policy to be what I want it to be. For me, I just like to use it for the verbiage and just like the basic language. Something I don't really adjust is the private policy, and I also don't really adjust the terms of service. But one thing you do need to adjust is the shipping. One of the biggest annoyances for me when it comes to shipping is when people try to do returns or when people try to say that they return something and then the package is lost. Unfortunately, when a customer sends something back, it is not the company's responsibility and that's why there's something called tracking and that's why there's something called insurance because it basically proves that somebody's actually sending something back and that the product is insured just in case it gets lost. I think the insurance is anywhere from like $100 to $200 depending on which insurance that you get. The insurance is already included in the $7 for the priority or the $20 in priority that you choose from. 
So that is it for the basics of Shopify. In the next video, I will go ahead and show you guys how I customize my website and how I put different graphics in the website and where I get the graphics from. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys are liking this series, please give your girl a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next upload. Bisous!